everybody! We are so excited to share our adventure to Ulithia Toll with you. Uh, it's by far one of the most unique and off-grid experiences we've ever had. I try to say it cause you hate it when I can't decide. So this was a really special trip to us. You actually can't just head out to Ulithi. You have to get permission from the community first. So once we got permission, we we're really excited. And it was really fun too because my mom and our good friend Brad came along for the trip as well. So Ulithi is made up of a bunch of islands off the coast of Yap. It's really amazing. It's like stepping back into time and the culture is so rich and unique. People are so welcoming. It's something that we'll forever be grateful for. So to get to Ulithi, we took a small eight-seater prop plane from Colonia Yap to Falalup, which is the main island of Ulithi. Cool. I will give anything to know I'm on your mind. As we were coming into land on Palala, it was a little bit nerve-wracking because the runway is this cement strip and it runs from one side of the island to the other. And so if you miss it, you're in the water. <laughs> we got on the ground, we were just greeted with open arms by the community and our good friend JP. Well, we can finally make it, you and I. So after we grabbed our bags, we made our way across the island to our friends Tess and JP's house, and that's where we were going to stay for the next few days. Tess and JP were so nice. They allowed us to set up our hammocks in their kitchen and take over their spot. <laughs> it's never too late. It's never too late. So once we got all situated at Tess and JP's, we headed over to the Chief's Hut to drop off some gifts we had brought for the community and also ask permission to go camping out on one of the islands. So after we left the Chief's house, we walked around the island a little bit. Uh, Ulithi was actually hit by a big typhoon a few years before called Typhoon Maysac. And so we got to see how some of the damage affected the island and then also how they've rebuilt. And it was really just great to see how the community came together and came up from this tragedy. So after cruising the island for a little bit, we headed back to Tess and JP's and just got situated and spent the rest of the night catching up. So the next morning we got up, we had a little bit of coffee, and then we had to head out on our morning chores. So Maddie, my mom, and Tess went out to get some bananas. Myself, JP, and Brad had to go find some coconuts for breakfast that morning. probably already figured out Ulithi is pretty remote. Uh, there's definitely no gas station that you can just go and pick up a six pack at. So JP was nice enough to teach us how to make our own cocktails. <laughs> what are you about to make? Uh, yeast drink. <laughs> He's the brewmaster. Brewmaster shit right here. You're gonna learn from like, you know, some Zen Bruce Lee legend in Ulithi. Number one. I like to separate each individual little yeast ball from each other. Mm -hmm. So they all get equal amount of coverage. Perfect. Welcome to the world of making prison liquor, dude. Yeah. This is where you put the love into it. Your energy you needs to go into this care and love for the community. Oh, it matters, man. <laughs> so the ingredients for our cocktails was yeast, sugar, and rainwater. 
And basically you put it in like a cooler or a big tub and just mix it around with your hands. And uh, then you have to let it sit in the sun for at least 12 hours and maybe up to 48. And uh, it's kind of gnarly, a lot of flies flying around and drinking it's kind of like drinking warm, sour bread. It's definitely not for somebody with a weak stomach. <laughs> oh, I suggest you don't smell it. I suggest you don't, like, you just shoot it, yeah? You just drink it. Yeah, baby, there you go. So our Ulithi cocktails uh, were pretty gnarly, but it was really nice to sit around and just hang out with everybody and get to experience it. So after a long night of uh, Ulithi cocktails, we got up the next morning, had some coffee, and started getting ready to head out to the island we were going to camp on. Uh, we realized that Brad had had a little bit of an incident the night before. <laughs> oh, okay. What up? Smile and tell us what happened. Nice. Fucking Kit Kat, bro. <laughs> so Brad had an urge to open a Kit Kat, and in doing so, chipped his tooth. So to get to the little island we were gonna camp on, we had to take a boat across the lagoon. The water was a little rough, and honestly, I was a little bit nervous, but we had a great captain, and we made it safely. So when pulling up to the island, it was just stunning. It was this blue that I'd never seen before. It was just crystal clear water, beautiful sandy beaches, and we couldn't believe we had this island all to ourselves. spot to set up camp. We hung our hammocks, threw our gear down, and then grabbed some coconuts to sip on and went for a walk. We really enjoyed our evening on Global. We watched the sunset, we laid in the sand and stared at the stars, which were so bright. There's no electricity on the island, no cell phones, and it was just so peaceful and we really enjoyed spending time together. So the next day it was filled with so much fun. Um, there's actually an island right next to the one we're staying on, so we got to swim over there and explore that one. We saw some eels, uh, we found some turtle tracks and turtle nests, which was really neat. And then before we knew it, it was time to head back to Flalo. So once we got back to Falalip, the community had put together a little get-together or party, and we had a blast. The kids had put on a cute, awesome cultural dance. Uh, we got to drink some tuba, which is like a coconut wine vodka thing, and uh, we had a blast. Yeah, it's filming. Right. Show us your missing two. There you got one, two. <laughs> Brothers. Brothers. <laughs> we really enjoyed this celebration. The food was amazing. They made us these beautiful flower crowns, which are called marmars. And it was just super nice being able to spend time with people, get to know their culture, and just really appreciate uh, what that island has to offer. So our last day was spent packing up, saying our goodbyes. We had such a great week hanging out with Tess and JP and their kids. Um, the community was amazing. We made a bunch of new friends and we were honestly super sad to leave. So we headed out of the airport, which is also the post office, and we were just hanging out saying goodbye to everybody. Then before you knew it, the plane flew by just to make sure that nobody was hanging out on the runway. saying 
some teary goodbyes, we hopped on a plane and I actually got to be the co-pilot. It was really cool flying back in that front seat. I could see everything and it was so beautiful. don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. If there's anything you think we should know or places we should visit, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Till next time. Bye.